what should be like the parameters? I kind of got lost. Let's did we come up with an action item or something? Or like a <laughs> well, no, I think you were just going to describe um, Pobble, for us. So okay, then, then yeah. I make it three summary. So the, the idea of Pobble was to have a, just a minimal format to just exchange the information that you know in the registry, basically. And maybe well, even less than that. Part, part of the information. Part of the information, actually. So that's, I think that's important to say that this isn't going to let you express a lot of the stuff that's already there. No, but it was supposed to be a beginning yeah. for the most minimal level of the yeah. You don't want to move backwards. You want to move forwards. That is, that is actually, actually a problem also. Yeah? I thought it's you could get that information out of the registry as it was, or it was all just text. Like it wasn't in the real yeah. format of the Well, I mean, no, I mean, well, I'm sort of I'm unclear sort of how much of it is, is okay. wiki now and how much is in structured format. Well, there's some, for instance, something like a classification of paths in the registry, which we haven't really catered for in this. Uh, well, that's right. I think that's, that's important. important. Yeah. I think that's yeah. important. But this I is think mm -hmm. some of the other information which is there, which you know, or which should be there, but perhaps isn't, uh, you know, is, you know, what, what are the organisms that this is going to function in? What's the code on yeah. usage of that? Well, some of, some of it's there, but like I said, a lot of it isn't. But it should be. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's in the data model. What see that's in the data model of the registry that is not in the What are the things specifically that you I see missing? Well, well I, think, I think that's an, that is essentially the discussion that we should be having. I think it's difficult to have this in a, uh, say, say it now or forever hold your peace kind of environment. I think this has but to continue. It does. It has to be, this, has to be a, this has to be an interchange that yeah. continues. But some things that immediately come to mind, I think you need to take very seriously the notions of families of parts. Uh, I think you need to take, uh, you know, you, you, need, you need a description of the, uh, at the device level, which we're, you know, not really doing a good job at with the registry right now, but, you know, there's clear intention to go in the direction of the- Do we have an adapter for this? Uh, what should we say is, uh, I guess, a meta device where you know, the, uh, it's, it's the topology of the interconnections of the parts that you're describing rather than you know, the part, right? It's, 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 the, you know, it's the set, it's, it's the generic description of, of how you would tie together you know, five inverters to make something that does something interesting. Uh, where you don't specify what those inverters are. I think you're actually nearly there. So the, what is not on this scene uh, that is actually gone. That's not where we're this. going, but that, that's not functionality that's in anything right now. That's, that's in the works. Well, actually, it's in some of the things that Jonathan wrote several years ago. But. <laughs> I, I'm actually pulling up the data model. Is, okay. Put it this way. If you were to convert to this format today for representing and sharing information, there would not be a data loss associated with those things because yes, there would. Using those that, things that, that is true. Data. That's that right. is so true. The question is, but what is in the registry that would be lost data-wise if you switch to a COBOL-based system today? Um, measurement results. That's all with the text. No, 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 no. Okay. Uh, There are special tables. Yeah. Uh, I can get them. There, like, like, go to the promoter page, promoter list. There are, are columns on that page that compare the um, the the organ the organization of the, the hierarchical organization of parts. And that was supposed to be captured by this family yeah. tree. So well, I, you know, I think but, yeah, I should I you, should you basically you explain need, it first. You need to be very careful about how you do that because the part usually can be a part of several different organizations. Yeah. Yeah. So we basically yeah. said, that's why I should explain it, so the idea yes, was please. to have a family of biobricks, so that was now complete for the biobricks, so that you have that every biobrick is a member of many families. Uh, no. Okay. Is it necessary, really? So, uh, so, ah, okay. So the, the idea would be that a biobrick can be a member of many biobrick families, and those biobrick families can be themselves members of biobrick yeah. families. So that you build up a multiple inheritance hierarchy like that. And then uh, you can associate data at different levels of families. What are you defining as a family? A family would be a collection of biobricks. It could be GFP-like proteins, or it could be a level further down. This variant of GFP, but in different coding 
encapsulating different coding variants. And then only when you drill down to the actual lowest level, you get to the actual sequence of that particular version of this bio brick. So that was the idea that you can build up levels like that. And can parts be in multiple families, like within the same level? Like, yeah. You know, it's not that I could be in this family and then I could be in this family. I no, it was supposed to be very freely associatable. Uh, better than, yeah. yeah. So that you can then vary for, okay, I want to have a protein that is a fluorescent protein and also belongs to the family of yeast compatible parts. Right. And that should be captured in this graph of family associations. That was, that was the idea. Yeah. And, then, and then the, uh, the question that we left open is whether we want, for instance, also versioning to happen in this family tool, whether you then also go that far that you say, okay, different versions of a biobrick would also form a family, for instance. That could be the first level, actually. So. Are uh, composite parts a special separate family, or would they be a of That is getting really interesting. I mean, yeah. then and you could probably also put them into families. Yeah, of course. And you have families of composite parts. And you have families of composite parts. And then the very serious problem which emerges out of you know, the computer-aided design tool other fields is what happens when somebody goes in and modifies a basic part which is part which yeah. is is a uh, is, is used in, in uh, you know dozens of other composite parts and you know which which version of the basic part now is the you know now is used as part of the description of those composite parts so you know there's there's that's what I'm saying is, you know, it is time to step back and think through these issues very carefully right now before we plunge forward and do something that we're going to regret in a few years. And, uh, you know, I, I'm in favor of moving forward, but let's do it in a deliberate way rather than in a, you know, let's just go do it kind of way. So, <clears throat> we can look back just briefly um, with regard to the device classes. Uh, this is one of the first tables defined in the old parts data model. Um, so device class, which is like your inverter, um, the logic function that it performed like in static logic, um, and the subparts, which defines the device types that make it up in the, in the logical order that they occur, a description, um, a way to package it, an icon, and uh, forget what uh, template is. That's that's if uh, if you can actually go and re-implement those parts. Otherwise, it just sort of defines a family, or parts family could encapsulate a device. Yeah. So this is the first iteration. We we're still in digital logic back then. This is sort of goes the opposite way. And I just want to show you one other table from the old data model, um, which the parts characters, parts characteristics um, that takes your, your part ID um, and the various different parameters that you're measuring, um, your minimum, maximum values, typical values, uh, what the unit of measurement is, um, the characterization type, so what sort of instrument you're using, and the chassis that you're doing the measurement on. And uh, there should be um, an additional, some additional fields there to describe the environment which you're measuring uh, those parameters. But this was sort of a start as to how to capture that data. Um, and you would use these parts characteristics if you were going to go do a simulation. So when you were building the code to send to the simulator, you look in, uh, look in the database for these uh, characteristics that are measured, and then you can actually make simulations that are more meaningful than just guessing. So that was the idea behind that, behind that. And a lot of that data was in the registry, probably is still sitting there, although it's not exposed. For 100 parts. It's there for 100 parts. Yeah. Right. How do we move forward with BioJ in the data model? I mean, we've got a little mailing list of couples, so, and there are actually people using it, sort of, parsing the registry, turning that into a couple. So that's good. 
I think we need to capture as much of that, as much of the data that's useful there as possible. One more type of data that you didn't talk about, which is the uh, annotation data that is associating certain information, like annotation data to parts of the part. Like oh, features. Features. Features, features yeah, the feature. Yeah. So that could also be something that is lost at the moment. It's yeah. yeah. incredibly important. Sure. And, you know, the, the other, there's two other, two other very important pieces of, of data that's in the registry, maybe not in the form that you would like to see it in, uh, one is, uh, you know, the literature references. Where the hell did this part come from? You know, how do I go find out more about it? You know, tell me about this part. And the other one, uh, you know, you know, the, you know the, uh, the IP status of the part, which I mentioned early on. We really, really, truly want to know that. I'd like to make, I want to make a point, though. I think that there's two types of users for parts or, and for a system for organizing parts and there's bench users who are like doing assemblies and they need to keep track of it of like all of these different uh, combinations of parts and they really aren't going to add that metadata to entries in whatever system they're using. Now, the annotation is also a part of the bench. Right, but like if you've got a thousand or a ten of a hundred parts, you don't necessarily want to go to the detail of adding the uh, like NCBI PubMed number, whatever, for each one of them. It's not important. It's like yeah, no, that's absolutely not right. I'm sorry. I just have to tell you, Mac, you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't want any of that stuff. I mean, so I can, I, I, Jason Kelly, if he was here, would back me up. I went and talked to him. How do you use the registry right now? Well, the main thing I do is just paste in a sequence that I want to do a composition with. It figures out the stars. gives me a part number that I can land my two. And that's it. Right? He does not write down well, that, that, that's, 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 that's the lazy that's, way of doing it. That's the problem, not, not I mean, that's, right. that's the difficulty with, with, you know, we have to make it easier for that all yeah. to happen automatically. Okay, well, because you do want that information. I agree. And if you don't want it today, you're going to want it tomorrow. Uh, you have to think about, you know, what happens. It's like writing a computer program without comments, right? Uh, you know, you may be able to understand it this afternoon. But the comments are for you three months from now when you come back and look at that code. Agree. I agree. We need to build systems that encourage people to add documentation. Demand. Okay. <laughs> so maybe well, that's part of that demand. But, but. So, so the, the that goes back is the part promotion thing. Part of, like, if you don't let people put things into the, into the database unless, I, mean, I think basically you need to, like, an open, like, any sort of junk can go into this database, and then you have a curated database yeah. that you well, need, right. need on, the, on the other end. Yeah. Well, we've been talking about that for like a year and a half or three years, or I don't know how long. Yeah. You and Randy even talked about it, but... But the fact of the matter is we need support for that annotation yeah. in the database. Absolutely it's it's I, I, I don't care if people put it in 5% of the time. We need it. Well, but there's a big empty text field, right? There's a description field. Who cares? Depends on whether you're talking about somebody who's in the business of creating parts uh, with the intention that they're going to be generally useful to the community, yeah, or whether they're the person who is, you know, just out there, you know, uh, slapping together this thing, and, you know, and, and you, know, you just want to do it as rapidly as possible, and two will get out of my way. And you know, those are two very different different communities. Uh, you know, the one I care about is the long-term uh, oh, right. you know, build-up of the technology substrate, which I think is the critical thing. And uh, you know, uh, you know, if, if somebody wants to throw stuff into the database, God bless, let them do it. But you know, don't come to me when there's a problem. So can I ask you another question, which is, I mean, there's already an existing resource like GenBank, there's a large database with annotated sequences, with feature tables and existing standards which we've worked on for decades now. Right. So my question is why with mobile and the issue of composition of the DNA sequence, which is absolutely crucial for experimental work, we've been told 100% on this, why don't you essentially use existing standards, which allow there's a lot of software out there which allows composition of, and manipulation of DNA sequences and extraction of feature tables and any kind of manipulation you do with those keeps those features in place. So why not keep it back with the catalogs in terms of GenBank? Yeah. <laughs> Have you had experience with the tools that automatically deal with GenBank entries? <laughs> They're not so great. 
But at least they tried. They tried. I mean, there's, there's literally annotations like from here to here is an overeating brain. Is that what we're talking about? That's hard. Or rather than the experiment you determined. But if you are a working science, experimental science, that's proof of information. Right. I mean, I, I want to know this sequence came from the Gen Bank file, you know, XYZ, you know, base, base 103 to. And, uh, you know, and you know, I've modified it by uh, you know, removing this restriction site uh, you know, with this silent mutation and uh, you know, in this format. And you know, here's, here's the, the five critical literature references that you should read if you want to know about this part. That's what I want. I also want whatever experimental data you've captured along with it. Exactly. So if you have your flow cytometry data, why not be able to link that file? If you have something coming out of that, you just make a laundry list of things that are missing? Well, we can start, we can start with a laundry list. And, and, then, and then we continue, what I said is that we continue we with that. We don't want to think that we're going to finish that list. No, no, no. So just, a just to the side. a fire break is something simple. But yeah. Oh, what? I'm sorry. A reference object. Oh, yeah. That just makes a wire bread. So, yeah. So, references. I think in the. Uh, I think we had actually pointers to references. We just didn't settle it really. This is not complete, huh? This is just a. But, but there's, there's some complicated things. So, for example, we have these families of parts. Do the, do the references go with the family of parts? They should they go, go with the parts. In my opinion, they should go at whatever level they are appropriate at. So if you have a reference about fluorescent proteins in general, it should go to the family of right. yeah. and as high just, up as possible. Just making sure we're clear on that. Yeah, yeah. Yes, that's right. So actually, in the end, the part itself would really be the implementation with the sequence with not much data associated because most of it is put up. Maybe it's tested. Yeah, tested. Yeah. Uh, experience is another one that you don't have in Right. So I can't completely see this, but it looks like it's families and formats come together to make this bio break. So are there no sequences which don't have an associated format? I uh, know that's why we were discussing to actually put this column down there. And then, uh, uh, no, the, 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 I mean, the purpose of the data model was to describe bio breaks with a format. And bio breaks have a format. Right. I mean, you, you can have the, the scarless format that's just a sequence also. That, that's, a, that's a valid sequence as, as well as the free word whatever. Yeah. But, so if you want to just raw sequence, then you put it in the, in the format that's not, nothing else. Yeah, yeah. Format, is, yeah. format is null. Yeah. Exactly. Nothing wrong with that. So, and then devices, devices, we had a discussion about them, we didn't define them really so much, so the idea was to prepare a device as soon as you know exactly what you want to measure there, what input and what output you would expect. Yeah. As one a collection of, the, of parts, but, but one of the critical things that you have to do is define define a way of describing what those interfaces are. Yeah, and there's no good way of doing that right in this in the scheme right now. What what is the input? What is the output? How do I measure those? Uh, how do I compose them? So I mean, that's a description, don't really a description of what those yeah. interfaces yeah. look like. How is that going to be the that's a very important thing that has to be I mean, you, need, you need to know the pin, the pin in and out sort of. I mean, the families is really a description of, you know, of you know, sort of the, the relationships between the parts. This is this is a description of what the what the port is in a device and you know, the, the way the way you actually would determine whether it works. Uh, it right. seems like yeah. this would have properties specifically on my No. 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 
because the device can be a collection of biogens. It can be a, a bunch of parts working together, and they together have this input and that output. Wouldn't, wouldn't, couldn't you have a biobridge family that say pops in, pops out the device, and then you could apply that family to now, the We wanted to keep one? the biobrick thing specific to something that is as a biobrick composable in one piece. And the device no. is a collection of bio of parts. That was that well, goes I mean, back to the definition in the that's definition that's together. Right. So that's that the devices easy. are collections <laughs> of parts, regardless whether they are actually plugged together or not on the DNA level. So part yeah. always implies it's a continuous single DNA. No, but that's why I would like to get the part word out of the out of the game. That's why I would talk about biobricks and I would talk about biobrick devices. And then I would talk about parts if we don't care about all those distinctions. I think to capture some of the input output for devices, you need uh, the idea of pins, which 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 is um, the points where pops go in and pop, pops go out. So that that's that's one thing. But then you need something to handle proteins and small molecules, and I think they're different, right? Sure, but it's it's also important to get the physical uh, composability parts there, which is you'd, you'd like you'd like a way of specifying what the metabolic load of this. Yes, that should be part of part of the part of the story. So I I, I don't know about a cost function, but it's I would say uh, you'd say cost. Well, one, I want to say that one thing, uh, I don't know, maybe you, got, you had someone say this earlier, but part of what we're doing seems like developing a standard that's not going to be used because there's no way to measure these things. Maybe there is, there's no standard way to do it. The point is that if you have a way of saying it, even if you can't specify it now, uh -huh. it's at least an opportunity later to come back okay. and be able to, you have a spot to put it from well, the way you develop it. So you have fun. These are these are like wiki text sections. These are yeah, like experiments. That's not something um, normalized. Well, it's something I care about. It's I'm going to look at that if I'm planning on using it. You read it. If someone puts it in, it's great. But I mean, it's just words. It's not something that you can. And you don't choose something that's great. Encapsulated. Yeah. 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 Ye
me this is my lead. At the end of the day, so that, and, and making sure that this should be immutable, basically that the registry, for instance, guarantees that this this URL will be the bio brick also in five years. You know, you could use a BOI. Yeah, it would be a better thing. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I don't know if you're expecting to be able to be a BOI. You're just giving them out and how are they? You need to sign up for like 500 bucks or something. They JB registry? Yeah, actually, uh, I, I can. This is the JB registry. Um, we spent about a year building this, and it has the advanced hierarchical features. You can look at all the different part types. Was it the same thoughts of the, the original registry? No. It's got almost nothing in it. Uh, Do they work? But it's not very searchable. Um, I guess you could look for a, a, a puck promoter. What does this experience John Byron do? Yeah. So this is this is the independent effort at Berkeley, and uh, it contains some very basic data, not very much of it, and just sequence and samples. Is there any chance you put that experiment on all the things? This? I wouldn't bother. I, I think so that's the end of the stuff. Yeah. Part of this discussion. We don't want to know the project. It is. here. Oh, not that it's been. Yeah. But I mean, it's been part of the discussion. So the data stored here is, is like totally not applicable to what we're talking about. Um, this is sort of a registry developed in a vacuum. Uh, that, that captures very little data, 
it's not useful to design so tools. It's clear that only a subset of the COBOL fields would get filled if you perform the query from the database and filled it, but you wouldn't get, I mean, it's not zero. It's almost zero. <laughs> well, you can at least get that. You get, like a, you get a name and, and maybe a sequence. There's no sequence for most of these. So and there's no way. functional data. Another thing that wasn't on my list, but which maybe you want to spend just a few minutes talking about, is the whole issue of, of private databases and how we deal with that. You know, not everything is going to be public, I think. Surprise everybody. And it's private, we don't know about it. So, well, but you'd like to be able to integrate those into, uh, into a coherent. <coughs> you'd like to be able to take your private data and, or maybe, the, maybe if you're doing a collaborative project between, you know, uh, Stanford and MIT and, you know, and there's, you know, there's proprietary data there and you're, you know, using the public database, you'd like them all to interoperate. How do, how do we do that in a gentle way? And I don't know, I don't know the answer to that, but I, I think that's part of the agenda here, is to try to figure that out. But if the company is going to have a momentum, they may want to have to follow. No. no. It'll never happen that it's happening now. It's the same thing even with software development. When it's open source, you don't do it. You don't, you don't have people looking at your code while you're writing your code. You make it available when you're done. So you're standing on namespace. Actually, 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 I kind of disagree with that. You do? Yeah. Uh, I, I think, from my standpoint, the goal would be that the registry becomes part of the design process. I don't want a separate set of tools that's going to go and, you know, and, and you know, help me design some sequence. And then when I have the perfectly polished gold plated sequence, I'm going to submit it you know, as, a, as a, you know, a shining object to the registry. I would like to be able to use the registry as a dynamic tool to help me design this part. And so it's a different model. Um, maybe we could share the same databases and get to the same place. I, you know, I don't think they're mutually exclusive. I'm just telling you what I would like to have. I would like one-stop shopping for the CAD tools that are necessary to put something into the registry. I would like you know, the registry to tell me where the restriction sites are. Uh, I would like it to tell me, you know, you've got repeat, repeats here, it's going to be a bitch to make this thing. Uh, you know. I'd like to have something, you know, a plug-in so that, you know, if you're, if you're at your TCAN or you're at your microscope, that you can capture the data and say, associate this with part blah, 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 with these experimental parameters, and that'll become, what? Sure it does. No, so but that's, it, that's, that, I guess that's what I'm saying. You need, you need an ability to take multiple databases in this format, kind of merge them together conceptually, because those are the permissions that you've got, and, right. and you know, be able to build upon that and build things that, uh, that rely on those parts. But that is possible using this idea of technology, because the client has an idea that can address and others can map their data to that idea, because data might only be visible within that network, right. but they are nevertheless yeah. mapped to this part. And then at right. some point, they can be actually made but publicly these, visible. These, but these are all things that are complicated. You know, we're, you know, we're, we're, not, we're not going to solve these sitting here. And, you know, well, we the, the, idea that, yeah, the idea, though, that, you know, that these are simple problems and why don't we just do RDF? Well, I think we definitely need to decide what we what we want to work on between now and the next time. I think we want to have some sort of draft, uh, you know, standard, uh, you know, in place or, or, you know, up for discussion so by, by, by Monday, the November 10th. So this may be a modification of public announcements or comments of public. No. Rework. Rework, yeah. yeah. 3.0. already at 3.0? I don't know. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's draft 3, not, uh, not 3.0. How about 1.0001? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's uh, zero. Uh, <laughs>
<laughs> it's in pre-alpha form stuff. So. Um, I don't want to cut you off. You know, we, did, we didn't have a discussion about uh, how to do simulations, how to standardize uh, simulation format. Why don't you say some intelligent things about that first? <clears throat> well, I guess it would be nice uh, if, we had, if we had a format that all simulators could, could accept and make something of it, but I don't, I don't think that's particularly realistic. Um, all the data you input, so let me... Like a description of your system. Oh, okay. and well, I guess this goes directly at, your, at, at, at the point that you were trying to make earlier. Then you critically need a description of what the hints are on your part. Right. Well, there's a poster up there. And it uses a seller. It's a one example of saying. So suppose you have a system that, that looks like this. with you know, It's a repress later. It's got that topology. Uh, that you've defined, you've compiled it. Um, the parts database has data about how those various parts behave. I suspect most of the people in the audience don't know your symbology there. So maybe it's another thing that we should standardize. Probably true. Um, well, so the colors are messed up. But uh, you have a promoter, ribosome binding site, coding sequence, uh, terminator. Uh, a protein that comes off that coding sequence and sort of a wire to the promoter that it affects and so on. And uh, this one goes to this one, this one goes to this one, this one goes to this one. So it's a uh, cascade. Um, and in BioJ, there's a function uh, that is called translate system, and it takes um, an XML object that actually drives this graphic. Um, that, that shows how the parts are aligned on the DNA, um, and then grabs or creates an XML object uh, species and reactions that sort of capture uh, what various objects are going are happening in the system and what reactions uh, those species undergo, and so defines uh, polymerases, uh, what they're called, how many of them there are. And then it goes through the DNA parts that you have in your system uh, and grabs various parameters about them. And then it turns them into an XML statement that looks something like this. And this execute simulation, this number of rows uh, with a random seed, uh, names the simulation, and uh, then it can actually go through execute the simulation and send the data back to the parts database. But if we had, um, I don't know that it's realistic to actually have a single format that goes to, uh, goes to these simulators, and I don't. I would, I mean, this is fine, um, but I would visit some standards in the system biology community that are doing this kind of thing, where they're defining how to run a simulation, what, what the model actually is, I mean, even things like what is the algorithm? So you, so you, you specify, so obviously, it's not sort of stochastic simulation, I guess. Right. I'm guessing, yeah. But there's actually a, a, a standard you can actually describe the algorithm as well that you use to run that. Yeah. So if we, if we could uh, hijack that, yeah. I think that or would probably. Just take the question. Sure. But I think it's definitely something that we should yeah. look towards doing because um, having common simulators and common design tools all speaking the same language, even if they're sponsored by Microsoft, uh, oh, would be a good thing. I was, I was <laughs> um, then you can you know, develop your simulations and but all get them in there. They're, they're being mainly put out by uh, Kingston in Cambridge uh, and European medical like there. It's a community effort, though. a lot of people right. sit in everything. So I'm not going to be at the iGEM meeting. That's it is unfortunate, but I, I do think that it would be important for us to perhaps look at that and, and I'll... You might want to document the thing, maybe. Provide, if you're not there at the iGEM, at least... So I'll definitely take a look at uh, the cell ML. Uh, no, yeah, I, I should email you and send you information on these other things. 
the, the salamel is another one. Uh, I don't know if it's a good, a good idea or not. Salamel is complicated. It, it would be good in general just yeah, to look at that. And, uh, yeah. I can so write something up. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Maybe I can. Five minutes early, too. We still have five minutes. So maybe I'll uh, uh, Skype in or something for that. That'd be fine. We can do that. Yeah. Although I think I got kicked off the net here. Oops. You <laughs> can't get in anymore. I'm monitoring you. Yeah. Jason Ford's were filming. Some subversive words about the Chinese government. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, it's been fun. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, 